Hello and welcome. In this presentation, I will show you how we do billing and coding for all virtual visit types. Let's start with an example. Let's say for this patient that the patient is not able to uh, participate in a video conference. They do not have the technical expertise or the equipment necessary for a video conference. All they have is their phone. So you can still do a virtual visit that is called telephone check-in and Medicare and some commercial insurances uh, pay for it. You uh, most importantly are able to help your patient meet their needs during this difficult time and you can also charge for it. It's a small charge, much less than the one that is used for the virtual visit with audio and video, but you can charge for it nonetheless. So. In a, in a note like this, what needs to happen is your medical assistant first would call the patient and go through the medications and the allergies with them. The reason is because during the course of your conversation with the patient, you may decide that you need to prescribe a medication or change the dose of an existing one. And in that case, you need to know what they are on and whether they are allergic to anything. Elements that need to be present in such a note include an admission or um, you know, a statement that the patient is aware that this is a virtual visit and that they will be charged for it and they have consented to participate in such a visit. That statement can be present either from a template or from a macro. I will uh, be making another video to talk about uh, types of documentation that can speed us up and help us become more efficient. But let's say that this is what we are putting here as a macro and it says the following. This is a telephone visit based on patient request. It says that the patient has consented, but it also mentions the Medicare restrictions for such a type of visit, which is that the patient should not have had a face-to-face -face visit with the provider within the last seven days and will not come for a face-to-face -face visit or procedure over the next 24 hours. It also has to establish the duration of that telephone visit. Now, after you are done and you document everything you talked with the patient about and prescribe the medication, then you can go to billing. And in that case, what you need to put in is a CPT code of G2012 for Medicare or for commercial insurance, you would put in 9944123. 99441 is for 5 to 10 minutes, 2 is for 11 to 20, and 3 is for 21 to 30 minutes. Now, let's say that this patient is able to participate in a video conference, and so you're doing virtual visit that has video and audio at the same time. So, uh, how is that different? Your medical assistant again has to go in before the visit starts and go over all the elements in the patient's history that you would normally do and document when the patient is seeing you physically in the office. Medications, medical history, allergies, surgical history, hospitalization, family history, and social history have to be present and documented. Then you use whatever template you uh, are using for seeing patients in the office. Let's say that this patient is seeing you as a new patient for diabetes. So you put in the template of diabetes and you need to put in a statement that says again that this patient has consented to this virtual visit. All it needs to say is this is a virtual visit and verbal consent has been obtained from the patient. The exam portion of the chart obviously has to be different since you are seeing the patient as a virtual uh, visit. In that case, there is a special form that has to be there or a special kind of uh, template that has to be there. And it basically says the following. It says that the patient appears well-nourished, no acute distress, um, 
normal cephalic, atraumatic, normal sclera, basically everything that you can see from a virtual uh, visit with the patient looking at their video uh, and um, not examining them in person. Now, obviously, if the patient shows you a skin lesion uh, or a mass or something of that nature, you need to add that and document it uh, in that exam section. Now, uh, the treatment section goes like normal. You would document whatever discussion you had with the patient. You would also document whatever uh, medication you prescribe, labs you order, and so forth. And when it comes time to billing, then you have to put in a modifier to explain that this is actually a virtual visit. To um, explain more what level you would be choosing, let me take you to this PowerPoint presentation. Now here, as you see, the new patients and consultations, you have to have three of three elements required. What do I mean by this? History, exam, and medical decision-making are the three elements that have to be present and based on which you determine and a biller and coder would determine what level is appropriate for each individual patient. So for a level three, you can have a detailed exam. You don't have to have a comprehensive exam. Now, the detailed exam is the highest that you can practically get from a virtual visit. Uh, you cannot really get a comprehensive exam unless you see the patient in the office. And that is why a lot of people have said that perhaps uh, we, we can only bill at a level three for a new patient and an established patient seen by virtual visit. But this is not totally correct, and I'll show you why. Number one is there is such a thing as time documentation. If you spend more time with the patient, especially in uh, counseling, education, and coordination of care, you have to document it as such. And in that case, you can put in the time, let's say it's 45 minutes. In that case, you would uh, be able to bill for a level four new patient or consultation. The other uh, caveat is that uh, for new patient or consults, you need three of three elements, but for an established visit, you need only two of three elements, which means that if you have the medical decision-making of moderate complexity and you have a detailed history, then even with the exam present for virtual visit, you can still bill a level four established visit uh, follow-up code. Again, the time uh, spent uh, can be documented and used for higher level billing, but I would not recommend you use a lot of level fives, whether it be new or return for a virtual visit because simply because uh, you know originally a level five is meant to be for a patient who's sick enough to be uh, in the hospital. So uh, you know if you're determining that this patient is really sick, um, uh, then you know uh, why are you doing a virtual visit with them at home? Uh, you know if they are sick to that level of of sickness, they they should be in the hospital rather than at home. However, you know there is the occasional patient where who's not that sick, but you spend you know a, a huge amount of time talking about their um, education for nutrition and other things. And in that case, you may be able for that occasional patient to put in a level five based on the time spent uh, with them. But use that sparingly. And uh, the uh, time documentation requirements are listed here, whether it be for a new patient, consult, uh, return patient, or consultation visits. Now, let's say that in the course of your discussion with the patient, they also uploaded either a sensor or um, insulin pump download to the server, and you were able to view that and um, kind of go over it with them, and you determine based on this to make changes in their treatment plan, then you should be able to bill for that as well. Let's go back to the note and see how we bill for all this. 
So first of all, you have to put in the regular code. Let's say it's a new patient code. So in that case, if it's a Medicare patient, you put a GT modifier. And if it is a commercial insurance patient, you put in 95 modifier. Now let's say that this patient is coming for an established visit. and you choose to do it as a level four. Same thing, you put in the GT modifier for Medicare or the 95 modifier for a commercial insurance. And then what you do afterwards is you can put in the code for that interpretation of the glucose sensor data. Now notice that even though you can evaluate the glucose sensor and the uh, insulin pump download in that manner, you can only be uh, charging for the glucose sensor, not for the uh, pump uh, uh, upload evaluation. Um, uh, so this is something that you could do the, in order for you to bill for it you just need to document that you have reviewed it that you've uh, scanned it in your system that uh, what decisions you made based on this review obviously if you have more uh, uh, questions more detailed questions about this you can discuss with your biller or coder this is just um, kind of uh, basics of documentation and of billing for uh, a virtual visit and um, after you're you're done with this what you could do is uh, close the note and then you'd be ready uh, so let's go over all of this just as one slide to remind you and uh, here is what you do and what to code for it if it's a telephone check-in, remember G2012 or for commercial insurance, the 9944 series. If it's a virtual consultation, remember that it's only allowed for commercial insurances as Medicare does not allow consultation codes. In this case, you use the 99241 through 5 and you put modifier 95. New patient visit, then you put in the code for it plus modifier 95 for commercial modifier gt for medicare established visit uh again 99211 through 5 with uh, appropriate modifiers interpretation of glucose sensor data 95251 i'm going to put in a document a word document in the comment section that has um, all this as a summary that you can use as a reference whenever you're billing for a patient and if you have any uh, questions, feel free to put it in the comment section as well. And feel free to share, like, and uh, subscribe to the channel so that you can get future postings. Thank you. I hope everything goes well.